So we had a good first week. Obviously, we weren't in pads. Uh, we'll be in pads from here on out. So we're excited about watching our guys progress and play a little bit more of a game that's uh, related to football than what we did last week. So we've uh, got a lot accomplished, more installation last week. So now we can, can line up and play and compete and um, try to get the guys ready to play in the first game next year. So we're excited about where we're at and, and looking forward to practicing now with pads from this point on. Now in pads, what's the, the balance between thud and full go? Well, we're in thud. We don't really practice full go anymore. We don't go to the ground, tackle to the ground. So many of those rules have changed over the last two to three years, but never really affected us. We haven't tackled to the ground in years. So we're, we're, a, we're a thud team. We, we play full speed, but we don't go to the ground. Um, but we think that it, it helps us in the big picture and try to do the best we can to simulate a game. Getting to see Derek Mason in, in action on the practice field, was there anything unique or different about this? Well, I, I like his enthusiasm. I mean, you can see him right now, and he's very vocal, and uh, I think the players migrate toward him. They like him. Um, I was hoping that his experience as a head coach and as a longtime coordinator would work in our advantage. I think that's happening. Do I know for sure? No, it's been three days, but but I like his encouraging coaching style. With how fast, but if any of the young guys stood out to you so far? Oh gosh, it's you know it's so hard because without pads, uh, it's just difficult without pads because we we uh, we tell them hands off for the most part. Uh, we'll know a lot more two weeks from now, give them a chance this week to play a little bit, and then the next week, we might start to see some guys that progress enough that we feel like can help us in the first game next year. You talk about how thin you guys are on the offensive line this spring. Kind of how do you manage that with pads on now? Well, we're going to practice. Uh, we're going to hold our breath and practice. I don't believe in practicing half speed or three-quarter speed. I just don't think that it relates directly to the game. It's a risk, but it's a risk that, that I'm willing to take because I think it's important in the progression of our team. You've seen uh, a lot of Gabe Brown and the Stoker High and whatnot. Mm -hmm. How is he looking so far and adjusting with that? I know he, he was dealing with a, a, an injury late last season as well. So the high school players that came in early are in good shape, okay? With them being in good condition, that gives him a chance when we start to pass. But he's at a position that it's almost hard to say anything about his progression without being in pass. I know it's probably similar with, with Garrett or with anyone, like you said, but what did you think of just kind of how Garrett's blending in with the quarterback group in practice? So well, he seems to be doing fine. Uh, again, the next couple weeks for those young guys, how they develop when we start moving around full speed and playing a little more real football, it'll give us a better idea where those guys are at. You had a lot of young receivers that contributed a lot last year. What's the next step in the progression for some of those guys? Well, we'll benefit from it. It was scary last year, as you all know, but we'll benefit from it because they have live reps. There is no substitute for live reps and experience, and that's what they gain. So now they should play faster in practice and become – the game should be – the game should slow down for them some. Last year they're just scrambling to get lined up and function. What's going to be the biggest difference in that wide receiver? What's going to be the sorry. Go ahead. What's going to be the biggest difference in that wide receiver room from last year to this year? Well, hopefully we won't be as thin. Uh, we ran into some issues preseason, which is scary. And hopefully we won't have that issue. We'll have more depth, and we won't have to play young players that aren't ready to get on the field. With Jason Taylor, he went from being one of the new guys in the secondary to, to now being uh, really kind of your veteran back there. Do you see him performing well in that role? Well, Jason's experienced. He's played a lot. So now he needs to grab it by the reins and give himself a chance uh, to really perform at a high level and lead for the other guys in the secondary. Let's go. With the Cowboy backs, Greg Cassidy is kind of your only experienced guy there. Silas back to, to offensive line. I guess what, what does that position kind of look like? Well, um, you know, Cassidy's back, the Twins back. Uh, so we need to get some quality reps out of those guys um, that have some experience, and we need to stay healthy. That's the starting point. Um, 
and then we progress forward from that point. Uh, at some time in August, we have to decide how much of 11 personnel team compared to a 10 personnel team we might end up being as the season goes on. Do you plan on using Blaine more in that role this year like you did towards the end of last year? Some, yes. There are certain things he can do and th certain things. He has limitations in certain areas, and in certain areas he doesn't have limitations. You got an updated contract. Um, it got announced last week. Kind of, how did that ball get rolling, and what are your kind of overall thoughts on it? Well, that was months ago from the, uh, President Shrum and Chad Weiberg. And, uh, as I mentioned last week, they, they have taken care of everybody in our building. That, this is just the last one that you guys heard about. So, um, as I said a week ago, I'm very pleased with um, the way they've handled the situation and gotten us into a point that can last for years to come. The updates that are coming to the stadium, how does that play into the, the level of the, what? the updates coming to the stadium? You know, I don't know a lot about that. Uh, I only know about what would be the cosmetic side of it. Uh, that's more of uh, Chad and um, Kyle Waters. They've gone through all the developments and changes to our facilities and stadium. The cosmetic side of some of the out, outside exterior and the field I'm involved in. We haven't got to that point yet. But I know they've had a lot of meetings. I know they're doing a lot of different things. I just really don't know what all it is. Yeah, but how important is that to keep when you have nice facilities, keep them top level? Well, yeah, and, and there's some there's some structure issues that they're they're updating in there. And then we're in an arms race for facilities, right? We have great facilities that work really good, but it's not enough because everybody else is building something new. So we have to build new things. That's the direction we're going at this time. I think the seating capacity can actually be lowered a little bit, just giving everyone more room. Uh, is that something that concerns you at all or anything like that? No, I think they did. They made a great decision in keeping our capacity at 60 or 58, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know who looked into the future, but you know, one of the issues that we may all have to deal with is live streaming, right? It's too easy to watch a game. You can watch a game on your phone. You can stay home. Uh, you can tailgate. You can put a 80-inch big screen in your tent, you get free food, you get free drinks, you don't have to go to the stadium. So eventually, I think that we're all going to have to combat fewer people going to games. So if we can fill this place up and sell out these suites, financially it'll keep our athletic department very stable, and it looks good on Saturdays. Mike, have you seen how coaches approach their players' mental health change over your, year, over your time? Well, for us, it's a big deal. We've made considerable changes in mental health. We've hired, uh, well, we're tied in with the Tulsa Medical Center, as you know now, with Dr. Trump. I've had multiple meetings with um, uh, psychologists uh, that are working with our team, and uh, we're going to increase that staff. Um, mental health is a serious issue that people push aside and don't take serious enough. Uh, we started talking about this five, six years ago. And we're working hard on it. I think we're a little bit ahead of the game, and we're growing that process as we speak. When you played, did you ever have a coach come and make sure your head was okay? Would that have helped? I don't think anybody talked about their head being okay or mental health in our sport even six years ago. Really? What do you think? What do you think? Tip the scale. I just think it's an ego sport. It's male athletes, and I'm not going to tell you my head hurts. And, and if I. The old days, if you tell me your head hurts, just tough it out. And I think we're all smart enough now to know that that's not the way it works. So there's been huge steps, I know, with our department with mental health. Not necessarily concussions, right? just anxiety and depression, right? which there's 5, 10, 15, 20, there's 25 people here. So five of us here have anxiety or at some point have depression. So it's a serious issue that everybody in the country, not just athletics, is starting to understand that we need to take a serious look at mental health. Yeah, there was an Ohio State lineman recently, who went, I don't know if you know this, went public, talked about Coach Day, Ryan Day there, literally helping him save his life. Because he was good with, you know, he was upfront about his battle. Ryan responded well, and it became a matter of, well, we gotta get this kid right, not forget about getting him on the field. I don't know if you've had something that serious occur here oh, with yeah. the kid. Sure we have. Have you? Oh, yeah. We've had, the last couple years, six or eight players that were would be in, I wouldn't say, there's degrees, right? There's anxiety. Right. There's, there's typical anxiety. There's typical depression.
and then there's a little bit more serious depression, and then there's critical in my opinion. We've had young men that were critical that we've helped, and we've had a considerable number of guys that had serious anxiety, and we've had 15 or 20 that just had what be normal anxiety or a little bit depressed for whatever reason. We've seen a bunch of it. There's been a lot of conversations that have gone on, and uh, our, our athletic administration understands the importance of allocating funds for increased mental health. And I'm 100% behind that. I mean, I've seen it in my family, my own family, I've seen it. You know, just people that uh, get anxious and things like that, and that can create some problems with everyday lifestyle. So I know it's real, I've seen it. You had a battle it yourself? Um, I, I mean, I have anxiety at times, but not to where I yeah. need to have discussions with people. Right. But, um, but I get anxious over things. I worry about stuff. It's the same thing. It's just on a smaller degree. So, I, I mean, I'm not saying I know a lot about it. I'm not a, obviously, I'm not a psychiatrist. I have studied and read a lot on it over the last four to five years and tried to press how important that I think, I think it is. And we stress to these guys all the time, if there's something going on, we need to know. I don't want to find out too late. I want to know. And so every year they get more accommodating to coming and telling me, the strength coaches, their position coach, our director of player personnel, our administrative staff. We have so many people they can go to and say, hey, I need a little help. And I think they know that. And every year it gets better. And it's the way it should be. You can be six foot four, 300 pounds, and be one of the strongest guys out here, but if you're if you're having mental problems and you're getting depressed and have, have anxiety, you're not healthy. What is so, that? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. What does that process look like with the sports psychologist? Do they ever like meet with the whole team, or is it more kind of on an individual basis? Um, we we have them um, speak to them in general, and then but you're not going to get a lot done like in a group setting, particularly with athletes, because they don't they don't want anybody to know. So. If we think there's any issue at all, it's done one-on-one. -on -one. And we've had real success with that. And it's ongoing now. There's there's uh, players, it's not just the players, sometimes it can be coaches. So there's 200 people in the organization. We keep eight to 10 of them in some, some type of counseling pretty much year round. And like, on, you mentioned, you mentioned the arms race. Um, I mean, you try to keep up with everybody, but uh, there's, you know, there's they're going to have limitations, you know, just based on budgets and what direction that athletic departments and ADs can go. I guess the, my best answer for this would be the teams that we recruit about, that we recruit against mainly are in this area. You'd like to be ahead of them. And um, can somebody build something new? somewhere else and be better than you sure. You can build a new facility here and in two years somebody else will build one that's better than yours anyway. So I think there's a happy medium and staying involved in the race but also not getting so far out of your league that you're just running the money out of your athletic department like crazy. I'm kind of talking about the offensive line that you had two new transfers, you know when they're gonna be here for practice. Uh um you know, I don't even think I can, I can't even comment on those guys. Sorry about that, I would. I, I don't know what the rules are anymore. I just know I probably better not say anything. Jaden Gray came can't. in pretty early last year with not a lot of experience playing football. He made some pretty big plays throughout the year. How have you seen him grow from August to now? He's just got more experience. He feels more comfortable. It's easier for him to practice and withstand the durability of practice and playing at a high level. And which is very important because you got to practice full speed if you want to function. You mentioned a lot last year that the guys were having fun practicing, and you said that that kind of concerned you at times. Has this group kind of carried that on? Is this group having fun practicing? Yeah, they're doing well. They they practice hard. We don't. We've been very fortunate. I mean, we don't have issues. Our guys like to play. They practice well. Their team chemistry seems to be good at this point. We'll know more in in August. It's too early, but they uh, they practice hard and. You know, hopefully we can keep everybody healthy and get quality, good quality reps, good quality reps over the next four weeks. Are there any specific things you're looking for from Spencer Sanders over these 15 practices? You know, Spencer had a had a really good year last year, um, 
and he continues to do well in practice. His leadership grows every day and every year. So we're pleased that he's, he's here. We're, we think it's awesome that we've got him for a couple more years. And he understands our system now. I mean, he's had lots of reps. So he just needs to continue to grow and, and lead so the team will rally around him.